Hi. Who was Sundiata Keita? What was his role in the founding of uh, the ancient empire of Mali? Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please subscribe if you've not yet done so and click on your notification button so we can let you know when new episodes are, are showing. Thank you. Now, Mali was established by the Mandinka, also known as Mandingo, a, a more popular name for the ethnic group, I believe, since uh, Kunta Kinte described himself as one in the major drama um, series, Roots, written by Alex Haley, about his family. Now, we should not be surprised by H Alex Haley's success as a storyteller. Since he traced his ancestry uh, to his ethnic group, which is famous for producing some of the most enduring epics through jellies, known in the French language as griots, and the practice of the jellia. The story of the evolution of the empire of Mali, which overtook Ghana, is very interesting and is often conflated with the stories of its two most famous rulers, Sundiata Keita and Mansa Musa Keita, uh, their, whose stories have been left as epics woven together and preserved through oral and recently written tra uh, traditions. According to his own epic, Sundiata Keita's father was a handsome ruler of the Mandinka who married an equally beautiful wife who bore him a son, uh, Dan Karan Tumani Keita. However, a soothsayer who visited this uh, king's court predicted that if he married an ugly woman, she would bear him a son who would one day become a very mighty king. Subsequently, he was presented with a hunchbacked woman by some hunters. Although this woman was, who was uh, presented was not nearly as beautiful as the bride he already had, he married her in the hope of fulfilling the prophecy. Unfortunately, when she gave birth to a son, Sundiata, he was unable to work. He was unable to work. Still, hopeful that the prediction would be uh, somehow fulfilled, the king tried to raise his crippled son without prejudice. Unfortunately, after the king died, his first son, Dankaran Tumani Keita, became king, but he was not accommodating of his disabled half-brother. As such, Sundiata, his mother, and uh, his two sisters were either banished or chose to leave the kingdom, depending on um, who was telling uh, the story. So there are two versions. Some uh, oral versions said that they were banished. Others said that uh, they chose to leave the kingdom for their safety. Anyway, they moved to a neighboring kingdom where Sundiata who could only walk with the use of a walking stick made out of a baobab, a baobab uh, branch, miraculously gained use of his legs. He then trained with the best warrior of that kingdom till he became such a formidable, a formidable fighter. His prowess made him so, so good, I mean, so indispensable as a warrior that his host kingdom chose to make him the heir to their throne. However, in fulfillment of his destiny, the Bojonin um, uh, Mali, which had started, I mean, Mali had started growing, but, you know, into a kingdom, sent for him after his half-brother, 
Donarang to many to many Keita took flight when the Mandinka were attacked and overcome by a marauding group which had already captured some kingdoms from the Ghana Empire. Um, some sources identify this group as the Almoravids, um, but others just identify them as a, a group of people who were um, capturing people in order to convert them um, to Islam. Sundiata then strategically entered into an alliance with other small kingdoms who then enthroned him as the first Mansa of the collective kingdoms. Now, of course, Mansa means um, uh, emperor, ruler, a king, and all of that. He succeeded in organizing this motley lot into a cohesive unit under the first Barra or assembly of nobles and minor kings of the emerging empire. So some form of um, democracy, I think we could, we can start seeing, started developing because uh, he did not rule as an absolute king. You know, he formed this assembly of nobles who were made up of uh, kings of other uh, smaller empires. And then he, he, he then presented them with a set of rules and regulations for administering the domain at his coronation. This move was to guarantee peace and prosperity in the new, uh, in the new state or the emerging empire. Initially, the capital of this new um, empire of Mali was Kangaba. I hope I'm pronouncing that, Kangaba, which was located on the banks of the Niger River. Sundiata's uh, ascension as a Mansa was in 1230, and as he went on to expand the handful of kingdoms into an, uh, a formidable empire, he moved the capital to Niani. After overtaking Ghana, he quickly took control of the gold trade, which Ghana had been famous for, and started improving agriculture by turning many of the soldiers in his army into farmers. They cultivated fertile land, which therefore uh, produced plentiful harvest of grains, uh, peanuts, and other food crops, as well as cotton. At his death in 12. 55. Sundiata was succeeded by his son, who was all, uh, also followed by a number of other less remarkable emperors until 1307, when another great ruler, Mans, uh, Musa Keita, ascended the, the, the throne. As you will see if you watch our episode on Mansa Musa, this extraordinary ruler of Mali is believed by modern economists to have been the wealthiest, wealthiest person who ever lived, even when compared to today's standards. So, according to some accounts, Musa Keita became Mansa when he ascended uh, to the throne after his uncle, Abubakar Keita II. He was initially appointed to deputize for Abubakar Keita during his absence. Abubakar Keita did this, um, that is, appointed him when he set off on an ex ex expedition to find the limits of the Atlantic Ocean, but never returned. Um, so, uh, naturally, it fell, the throne fell on uh, on uh, on Musa who became enthroned after they waited for his uh, uncle and he didn't come back now historians like um, Ivan van Setima believe that some of the sailors that Abubakar sent found their way to the Americas long before uh, Christopher Columbus please uh, if you have not yet read the book, They Came Before Columbus by Ivan Van Setima, 
do so. And um, I want to thank um, our viewers out there. Um, uh, some of them have actually posted in the uh, comment section um, and have recommended this book. So please make the time to look for the book, They Came Before Columbus by Ivan, Ivan Van Setima. Now, um, Mansa Musa was a man of many interests and talents. And over a reign of about 25 years, he consolidated the wealth of the empire and left his mark in many areas, such as education. He was a patron of the arts and sciences. Although he adhered to the Muslim faith and tried to get as many of his citizens as he could to follow in his footsteps, he was pragmatic and open-minded enough to allow them their freedom of religion. Now, one of the most famous accounts of his reign illustrates the wealth of Mali as, a, as, a, as an empire and Mansa Musa's personal wealth. There are several accounts of his pilgrimage to Mecca. Uh, he made that pilgrimage in uh, 1324. Um, and apart from his wife, Inari um, Kunati, some accounts assert that he had over 60,000 men and women accompany him on this spectacular journey through the desert. John G. Jackson reports that in order to finance this trip, Several camels were laden with 300 pounds of gold each. He was accompanied by a very efficient commissary department and several cooks. Jackson further illustrates this emperor's wealth by the impact that his presence made in Cairo, which was uh, in Egypt, where he stopped on his way to and back from uh, Mecca. So apart from the elaborate reception accorded him by the Sultan of Egypt, the amount of gold circulated by the emperor and his entourage during his visit was so vast that it brought about a slump in the gold market in, in Egypt. It was reported by an official of the Egyptian government that it took them 12 years for the gold market to be revived after Mansa Musa's visit. This elaborate pil uh, pilgrimage was so widely reported that several European cartographers started publishing maps showing the location of Mali because of the level of interest by the European public in locating this uh, wealthy empire. They were desperate to find the source of the wealth. There is a reproduction of a map made for King Charles XIV of France with a drawing of Mansa Musa on it. Uh, he's seen wearing, a, uh, rig wearing regal robes and an elaborate crown. He is drawn holding a scepter in one hand and a large gold nugget in the other. Uh, copies of the map with the uh, with the drawing are available online if you google images of Mansa Musa. So I, I have also I have written a children's illustrated book about this charismatic ruler of Mali which is available for sale through Amazon in Grams Park as well as Okada Books for viewers in Africa who might be interested in purchasing it for their children. It is the first uh, of a series of um, uh, children's illustrated books that uh, we're working on to make our history accessible to our children from a very early age. Um, thank you very much for watching. We'll, con uh, we'll continue with the history of Mali in the next episode. Please, please continue to engage uh, on our, uh, with our community and send your questions. We will Try to answer them in uh, in uh, future episodes, and also watch out for uh, our live um, program where we're working on that. We'll bring it that to you soon. Thank you.